fasting does not, doesn't increase total testosterone levels. It does increase SHBG levels. And without some sort of exogenous stimulation on the testicles in place, testosterone levels will go down and you won't feel as good as you did before the fasting. Starting with intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, especially a recent a study, which was published on April 22nd of 2022, titled Effects of Intermittent Fasting on Reproductive Hormone Levels in Females and Males, a review of human trials published in Nutrients and performed by Sinfugos et al. This review paper shows that intermittent fasting in various iterations has a deleterious effects on androgen levels on reproductive health of both women and men. For men, intermittent fasting reduced testosterone levels in lean, physically active young males, but did not affect SHBG concentrations. So the difference between long-term fasting, real fasting, and intermittent fasting with a eating window of, let's say, eight hours, six hours, four hours, that's basically OMAD, one meal per day. Um, in those cases, uh, SHBG levels seem to be non-affected or insignificantly affected, but total testosterone-free testosterone levels do decline quite steeply. Interestingly, muscle mass and muscular strength were not negatively affected by these reductions in testosterone levels. On the other hand, fasting may be shown to decrease androgens among males, which could negatively affect metabolic health and libido. And again, that's in the long term. So I would highly recommend you to read this review paper of all of the scientific evidence which has been performed on intermittent fasting over the last couple of decades. I'll link all of the studies down below. Um, and let's get into the two studies performed on fasting in males in regards to serum testosterone levels. The first one is from 1986, performed by Tengelman et al. titled Peripheral Hormone Levels in Healthy Subjects During Controlled Fasting. So here you can see in the graphs in the results of this study that they measured the changes compared to baseline in percentages. So you see the percentage in change of total testosterone, SHBG, and free testosterone levels in group B, C, and D. Group B were after three days of decreasing food intake, so whether that was intermittent fasting or restricted caloric intake. C is immediately after seven days of controlled fasting, and D is one week after the fasting period has already ended, and food has been reintroduced in a similar caloric and macro breakdown as before. That's at baseline reading. You see that after three days of decreasing food intake, whether that's IF or caloric restriction, that total testosterone in both women and men went down, while SHBG went up, and that's more in men compared to women. But after seven days of controlled fasting, testosterone in both men and women went up, more in women compared to men. SHBG went up significantly, let's say uh, over 150, maybe even 200% in both women and men. And then after reintroducing the food, um, some interesting results, testosterone levels went up yet again. And in the results, the researchers note that there's no statistically significant changes found in total testosterone levels, but the relative levels are illustrated in figure three in order to facilitate the discussion, which is basically what I just did for the last couple of minutes. A strong, highly significant increase in SCSPG was found in both sexes immediately after fasting. And in women, this increase remained one week after fasting. So even though food was reintroduced in the female subjects, SHBG was still elevated. How poor their libido was, we'll probably never know. And another study I want to highlight, also pretty old, from 1987, performed by Roortmark, titled Influence of Short-Term Fasting on the Pituitary Testicular Axis in Normal Men. This study showed that the difference between an eight hour fast and a 56 hour fast, so after eight hours is basically overnight fasting after not eating for eight hours while you're sleeping, that's not a real fasting, you do it every single day. We're mostly interested in the 56 hour results. You see that between eight to 56 hours, total testosterone levels went down, while estradiol levels stayed pretty much the same. Luteinizing hormone went down and Follicle stimulating hormone also went down, while blood glucose levels also went down, which is normal if you're not eating, serum glucose levels are going to go down. So this is only the difference between an eight hour fast and overnight fast compared to a 56 hour fast, which is almost two and a half days. Here they note in the results that group C had a basal serum LH of 7.4 IUs per liter, which decreased to 4.8 IUs per liter 
over a 46 hours of food deprivation. Serum testosterone also fell significantly during this period from 770 to 570 nanograms per deciliter. I did the conversion, so it's a little bit more relatable. Now it gets interesting. Gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone stimulation after the overnight fast induced a maximal luteinizing hormone increasement of 22.6 IUs per liter. So that's um, how much percent increase from 7.4 to 22.6 IUs per liter. Uh, clearly, these guys were drug free. Uh, most enhanced individuals would never see an LH that high when they use a gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone. So Good on them. And the corresponding LH increment obtained after a fasting period of 56 hours was significantly larger. 35.9 IUs per liter. So from 7.4 to 35.9 IUs per liter. That's a huge boost in luteinizing hormone levels. Gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone failed to induce an acute release of testosterone after the overnight fast. So uh, basically LH levels aren't really responsive in this context after fasting for eight hours overnight, but raised testosterone levels significantly above baseline when given after the 56-hour fast. Moreover, the gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone elicited testosterone incremental area was significantly larger after the prolonged fast compared to the one obtained after the overnight fast. So basically, let's digest this. Let's make it a little bit easier to understand. Exogenous Gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone increasing luteinizing hormone levels after prolonged fasting for let's say two and a half days can increase total testosterone levels similarly to how urine purified or recombinant HCG human chorionic gonadotropin replacing the luteinizing hormone signal can increase total testosterone levels while fasting for longer periods of time as shown in my blood work results increasing my total testosterone levels by approximately 34 to 35%. But if you're going to do long-term fasting, at least over two days in duration, without exogenous gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone or recombinant or urine purified human chorionic gonadotropin in the picture to elicit a testosterone response from the testicles, then your testosterone levels are probably going to go down quite dramatically the longer you fast. So keep that in mind. Fasting does not doesn't increase total testosterone levels. It does increase SHBG levels. And without some sort of exogenous stimulation on the testicles in place, testosterone levels will go down and you won't feel as good as you did before the fasting. Will it improve your overall metabolic markers? Yes, it will. Will it improve your overall intestinal health? Yes, it will. Will it create perseverance and uh, determination and this grit and this hard earned control over your appetite? Of course it will, but it won't increase your total testosterone levels. Otherwise, all of these TRT clinics out there would instruct you to stop eating for a week and then come back and magically your total testosterone levels are super physiological, or at least to the middle top of the reference range, right? You still need HCG or a GNRH or actual testosterone to bring your total testosterone levels up quite significantly. I hope it was informative and hope it gives you some food for thought. Don't listen to these grannies that claim all kinds of things by simply abstaining from foods um, regarding your sex hormone levels. I fast um, every three months or every four months out of the year, give or take, for five and a half days. It does wonders for my overall health, but it doesn't do anything for my total testosterone levels if I wasn't using HCG. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Ed Vigor Steve, a front double bicep for the Vigor Screw. You guys know what to do. Even though I was fasting, um, these can still look quite good. But I will say that fasting is pretty brutal without actual exogenous testosterone in the picture. I got much better results regarding fat loss with a little bit of exogenous testosterone. Still, fat loss was pretty good. I'm starting to look better, but still not as good as they did on cycle. But let's see what happens going forward. For now, we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.